Earlier this week, an event at UAF highlighted technology and research aimed at addressing Alaska's housing shortage. The event, which included partners such as Penn State University and the Department of Housing and Urban, touched on the possibility of using 3D printers to make homes in rural areas. Key points include use of a 3D printer that could make concrete out of locally sourced materials in Nome, where the research will be located. One of the objectives of the research is to determine if the technology can be used to alleviate housing shortages across the globe, but also to see if it can produce more affordable housing, which is an issue facing young and low-income adults. In theory, uh, the technology has the potential to build more cheaply, uh, which could address some of the needs for housing for younger people whose incomes tend to be lower. Uh, but it's also built durably um, to withstand uh, climate change, extreme weather events. So this housing could be generational in it as well. Um, uh, and I think for a lot of uh, young people, uh, particularly um, interested in sustainability and our carbon footprint, uh, as well as bringing down utility costs. So that's the sustainability piece. Another area the technology could help is with labor. While Alaska does have a strong trades market, rural areas often face a critical shortage of construction workers and other trade labor. One of the research leaders, Dr. Farzanita, says this technology will help reduce the burden of rural communities where these labor pools may be lacking. The printer can also complete work at a fast pace in some cases as well. But as technology like 3D printer improves, some folks are concerned about their jobs being replaced by machines. Working with robots doesn't necessarily mean that we don't need uh, experts or skilled uh, workers, but it, it's kind of like helping the construction and kind of like, like I said, for example, it helps with uh, saving, I mean, or reducing the material waste, for example, or accelerating the construction process, but it definitely needs people to work on that. Green also said that this technology has potential military applications, in particular creating structures in war zones where it's difficult to bring in materials and build in a timely manner.